and I'm going to start with the product management module, sorry, inventory management. And we are done with the product management. Okay. And in the product management, uh, I request you to complete uh, item FPDI, this video. Please complete this topic practice. It's important topic. It's important topic, please practice it. So I have a lot of topics to be covered. That's the reason I'm not covering in the class. I'm giving the video. Please complete this topic practice from the product management, okay? So in the product management, uh, we discussed about all the item related stuff, okay? Nothing but whatever the prerequisite setup we have created. That's all around the item uh, creation only, item functionality only. Now I'm moving to the inventory. So this inventory module, it will take uh, uh, 10 hours time to complete inventory module, 10 hours I need. This inventory is nothing but the, uh, so the name itself inventory, we're gonna maintain the stock here. Uh, we receive the stock from the suppliers and uh, we ship the stock to the customers from the inventory. And we also perform internal transfer also, nothing but from where one warehouse to another warehouse, we perform this stock transfer. And for our stock, we can generate the lot numbers, we can generate the serial numbers, and uh, we can frequently count our stock. So we'll be discussing all those topics here. <clears throat> so this is nothing but if you see this section, inventory transaction sections, this section. So this is nothing but uh, uh, stock movement, stock movement between the various cells and between the ordinations. And this is for our stock generating the lot numbers and then serial numbers. And uh, this is nothing but counting our stock frequently. Counting our stock frequently, that is nothing but accounting methods topic. And uh, this is uh, nothing but maintaining the always uh, minimum inventory levels. So this is called as replenishment method. So we can set up a minimum inventory level for certain items. So when the system identifies if any item less than that uh, minimum, uh, uh, inventory level, then it will automatically reorder. It will automatically replenish. Okay. So these topics will cover. And when you compare this inventory model with EBS, when you compare this inventory model with EBS, same, 90% same, no difference. Only 10% is the difference. Nothing but here one or two new functionalities got added that I'll be covering during the classes. Okay. Now, first topic is inventory transactions. Before we perform these transactions, uh, our business user, we are using which business user? Shankar, our business user right now. Right now, uh, configured to create items only because he got uh, which roles? Item related roles. What are the item related roles, team? Product, product manager. manager and data uh, product steward. Product data manager and product data steward. steward. Okay. So product data steward role is required for item upload. I logged into the business user and uh, here from another browser, I'm going to log into the implementation user. implementation user is going to perform suppose if you take product management module what implementation many uh, sorry implementation consultant is going to do is going to configure all these setups around the item functionality what business user is going to do business user is going to create maybe a single item or multiple item or copy item or deleting the item inactivating the item okay so he's gonna just create the item data just create the items the remaining, the prerequisite setups, an IT guy has to configure it. But you know, out of these prerequisite setups, business user can also perform small, small configurations, nothing but creating a new unit of measure. Suppose here we discussed about unit of measures, right? There is a new unit of measure and uh, you know, you don't need to create it and the business user can create it. If you provide a training to them, they can create on their own because if you have to create means uh, there should be a ticket from the business user, there should be a ticket from the business user. You have to acknowledge the ticket and you have to ask what are the interpreters has to be created. So all this communication can be avoided. 
So simple, simple setups can be trying to the business users. They can perform on their own. Okay. And uh, I'm going to add inventory roles to the business user. Actually, in real time, you know, these activities are done by different, different peoples. Nothing but uh, here we have only one business user created. But in real time, uh, one department uh, manages the products and the department manages the inventory and the department procurement and the department order management and the department finance. So different people are managing all these things. But here we are having only one business user. To that business user only, we are adding the roles. What roles we are adding? Inventory roles also we are adding to the same person. <coughs> security console, tools and security console. And from the user section, uh, I'm searching for the business user here. I can search with the username. I can search with the first name, last name, and the email ID also. And uh, I, I'm clicking on the edit and I click on add role. So coming to inventory, there are two roles are there. Warehouse operator role. Warehouse operator role. So you have to take uh, the roles which are starting with Aura. So these are the latest roles. <clears throat> you have to always uh, assign the latest roles to your account. Warehouse operator role. So if you're having warehouse operator role, you are able to perform invent transactions. And if you're having warehouse manager role, if you're having warehouse manager, you're also a manager to that warehouse. And if you're having manage, warehouse manager role, you're able to perform simple, simple configurations also. Simple configurations in the sense uh, that uh, business user is able to create new inventory or nations new sub inventories and new locators inventory related setups can be done by that guy okay so that differentiation between these two roles i have given here in the document in the document if you go to under the inventory if you go to right hand side i have given the difference between operator role and warehouse manager role okay so here operator, you see here I have highlighted, operator can perform the inventory transactions, except what? Except the setups, okay? But warehouse manager, the second, uh, the box is for the warehouse manager. Warehouse manager can set up, can set up warehouse related things. Okay, see here configuring warehouse setups like creating new inventory or nation or updating the existing or nation properties creating a new sub inventory or locators okay that can be done by warehouse operator and manager okay this is the difference now i have added two roles now the next thing is now the next thing is okay this guy is a warehouse operator for which inventory or nation for which warehouse this guy is a warehouse operator for which warehouse that's called as a data access the data access uh, you know, to assign the data access, you need not to have a IT security manager role, not required. Our business user is having IT security manager role. I think no. I'll show you. All right, now I'm in the business user login. This guy is having security console. No. No. See, see here. To assign data access to yourself, security console is not required. You can go to the setup and maintenance. You can go to the setup and maintenance and go to manage data access for users. This is the task name, global search. Manage data access for users. What you see here, this guy, the task is visible, but he is not able to access that task. It's because is not having the IT security consultant. Yeah, and application implementation consultant role, especially. If he has at least application implementation consultant role, he should be able to give a second one.
Hmm. So if this business user is having application implementation consultant role also fine, he's able to access this task. Okay, since you don't, don't have IT security manager, if you don't have application implementation consultant role, he's not able to access the task. Now, from the implementation user, let's assign the access. Main is data access for users. You see the difference? If you don't have access, what's going to happen? And if you have access, you see the task is allowed to you. And uh, I think you are uh, familiar with the screen, right? Data access screen. Now, first role is where host operator. And uh, all the inventory transactions are performed at inventory level. Inventory level. So security context is inventory. We have how many inventory organizations? We created how many inventory organizations too. So this guy is a warehouse operator for Hyderabad. Okay. Roles we are providing from the IT security manager, but data access we are providing from here. And I'm making this guy as a warehouse operator, not, for, not only for Hyderabad, I'm also making for Bangalore. Okay, now again, duplicate it. Now for warehouse manager, provide the data access for warehouse manager. Security context inventory or and uh, I'm also making this guy as a warehouse manager for both the inventory organizations. Do we maintain the stock in the item master organization? No. Item master is only for the item creation. That, that's it. You don't perform any transactions again if that are you don't receive stock or you don't ship stock, you don't do anything. Only item creation, the name itself, item, master, organization, that's it. The purpose is for the item definition only. Okay, I provided the data access. Now, better once log out and log in. Now navigating to supply chain execution. From the supply chain execution, I can see inventory management app. This is inventory management app. Okay, I'm able to see this app. By opening this app, I'm able to perform the inventory transactions. Inventory transactions, nothing but I can receive the stock from I can receive the stock from the supplier from here. So see here, if you switch to receipts. I can receive the stock. I can ship the stock to the customer also from here. See here, shipping. I can ship the stock to the customer also. I can perform the counting also. Stock counting. Okay. And the first is nothing but inventory movement. Inventory movement is nothing but stock movement between the between our entities. Nothing but one stock movement between one sub inventory to the other sub inventory or from one inventory or nation to the other inventory or nation. Okay. Now, what is the first concept in the list? What are the remaining roles? I'll explain you later. Thing. Okay. I just covered only operator and manager role. So, the first concept is inventory transactions. And coming to the inventory transactions, uh, the first topic is. Uh, somebody has updated this template. Don't modify the file team. Okay, don't modify it because it's been uh, 
used by everybody don't modify it Misleadness receipt and misleadness issue. So normally, if you want stock in your warehouse, if you want stock in your warehouse, suppose if that item is a buy item, you buy it from the supplier. Okay. Suppose if the item is a make item, you actually manufacture the product. Correct? Yes. So for the buy item, what is the source? For the buy item, what is the source? The source will be supplier. For the make item, uh, what is the source? A make item, the company. Yeah, our manufacturing, our own manufacturing plant. Yeah. With completion. Yeah. So here, the miscellaneous receipt and issue is nothing but instantly increasing the on hand and decreasing the on hand instantly. You don't have a when you instantly receive, you don't have a source. The source is unknown. You are just increasing the on-hand. And issue is nothing but if you want to issue out some on-hand, you are uh, performing the miscellaneous issue. This is nothing but decreasing the on-hand. I will show you transaction first, and later I will give you the business reason why this transaction is used. Okay. First, I'm showing the transaction. So from the inventory, so click on create miscellaneous transaction. Click on create miscellaneous transaction and select the org. Select the org and click on OK. And select the transaction type as miscellaneous receipt. That means I'm performing the receipt. I am performing the receipt. And uh, this I'm selecting to yes. Use current item cost I'm selecting to yes. Why I'm selecting this to yes, I'll explain you in a few minutes. And uh, this is called as a header. At the header level, you see the transaction date and what kind of transaction you want to perform that we entered, okay? And also you see the time. Right now, what is the time it is displaying? 4.52. 4.52. Okay. So now what is Indian time? 7.23. It's not in UTC also. It's in some other time zone. So what I'm trying to convey is <clears throat> our application, by default, it is in the UTC time zone by default, because this is the cloud application, can be accessed by any user. Suppose if you are a client having operations across the world, across the globe, you're working in India, somebody working in Singapore, somebody working in Australia or Canada, okay, different, different countries. But this is a cloud application. The cloud application by default, it will be in the, by default, it will be, please note down this point. It's an important point. I think you are still continuing running the uh, writing the running notes, I believe. You are continuing that habit. At least, uh, at least in the notes, mark uh, date and uh, note down what is discussed uh, uh, today. And you note down important points. So yesterday I have mentioned about one important point. What is that? ADFDA can handle only 5,000 records. I don't know whether that important point is captured in your notes or not. Always you should be attentive to capture these important points in your running notes. Again, do not use mobiles during the class. Don't use Instagram, Facebook, okay, restricted. Do not use. 
just for one hour please put your concentration here no deviations please turn off your mobile data and wi-fi don't use internet <clears throat> okay now here i'm working from india i wanted to set up my time zone how to set up it i'll show you i have to go to you know from the drop down i have to click on the set preferences so these preferences are specific to my user i'm going to from the drop down set preferences yeah, you want to close the screen and you want to navigate to that screen yes just close the screen and go to the preferences screen how i navigated from the drop down you click on the set preferences set preferences <clears throat> and here click on regional under general click on regional and uh, right now which time zone is selected okay some ariba real time zone is selected now country i'm changing it to india and date format uh, indians we use uh, dd mmyy right that date format got defaulted okay we use date in the starting but uh, americans they use month in the starting and a number format and then currency automatically got defaulted from the country selection for the time zone you have to select to the indian time zone indian time zone is nothing but kolkata okay after the independence what is our first capital kolkata the east india company yeah okay i'm saving uh, kolkata as our time zone click on save and close now if i open any screen if i open any screen i see my time zone my time india time suppose i'm going to supply chain execution inventory management and from the task list from the task list go to click on create miscellaneous transaction now you see the date the date is indian time okay now i am performing a transaction today i am performing i am from india okay in the front end i see my date my time zone okay but what about table level what about table level you are you are in us you are performing a transaction okay and uh, it's a us date and time so from the front end okay you are able to see us date and time but what about table level table level it will not it will not take uh, the user time zone it will always take UT, utc time zone on the table level whatever the transactions whatever the data that you are creating it sits in the table right every transaction it will sit in the table every data that you are creating in the application it will sit in the table in the back end table in the table level always the data displays in please note down utc always the data displays in utc time zone utc time zone please note down this point please note down this point table level data displays in utc time zone okay suppose the client i'm i'm asking i'm the client i am the client you are the implementation team your it team i'm asking for a item report item report i'm asking for a report i'm asking for a report then you'll ask me okay you're asking for item report in that report what data you wanted to see you send me a sample data i'll send you them you have to ask me okay i want item name and item description Gonna, and i want a uh, created by and uh, uh, creation date and i want that item is assigned to how many i want the item to be assigned to the categories i want the category information also okay i want all this information in a report okay i'm sending you this format so what i wanted to see i want the item name 
whatever hundred or whatever item description and who created it and uh, when it is created i want it to be assigned to which catalog okay which category uh, electronics let's take i want all the i want the report with all the item information like this now here coming to the creation date okay 29th june and i want a date and time also i want date and time also in that case 29th june the time i want the time also so coming to this time okay this time if you prepare a report this time will be displayed by default utc utc it is utc that means whatever the time that i see in the report you developed me the report and you have sent me the report but here i see the time belongs to because of the time even date also might change we are maybe in 30th but utc time zone may be in uh, 29 only what is the utc time zone currently 30th only 30th only but sometimes you know because of the time it may be one day previous also right so by default what i'm trying to say is when you prepare a report an it team prepare a report it will by default display in the server time zone server time zone is utc suppose if this report is asked by india right i'm from india this report is asked by an indian guy okay then in that case what you have to do is the time zone whatever is displaying here that you need to convert into the india time zone and you have to display in the report understood the server time zone you have to convert how to convert is in, in the sql code only because you are going to build report in the sql only you are going to build the report in the sql only so in the sql itself convert statement is there convert time zone statement is there user uh, convert uh, time zone statement and you convert into the user uh, user preferred uh, time zone okay understood how to handle the reports time zone yes sir so here one more problem is here one more problem is okay you are converting into india time zone okay fine but uh, what about some other user he wants the same report some other user who is from uh, us so again for that user you have to create one more copy one more report converting into us time zone or else or else you don't convert it you you display this in the utc time zone only so that uh, there will be only one report that one report can be accessed by everybody every user is from any country uh, everyone is going to use only single report that report it will display utc time zone only you have to clearly mention that every report is going to all this report is going to display in the utc time zone or maybe in the item name itself you mention like this item name itself time zone utc so that the business users are aware okay whatever the time that is displaying the date and time it is utc they convert it on their own understood instead of creating multiple copies of the report for every user belongs to a specific time zone just keep it only one copy yeah okay. clear team yes sir yes <clears throat> freshers yeah, no. beginners you are good so i have yeah, yeah. a query yes sir ah huh. Uh, so that conversion will be done by us or a uh, technical team it's done by a technical team only because report is built by the technical team only so mm -hmm. during the report uh, code generation they write the convert statements okay they write the convert statements <clears throat> i mentioned this point during the explanation maybe i think uh, you did not follow me beginners you are good so what i'm trying to say is always the server time zone is in utc if you build a report in that report the date and format and time will be displayed in the utc suppose if the time is, it has to be displayed into the specific user time zone then you have to convert that uh, server time zone to the ist or uh, or us time zone pst cst or whatever but you know when you con convert uh, like that then you end up in creating multiple copies of the report because for indian users one report for us users one report 
for uh, in us itself three time zones are there okay US, uh, EST is there cst is there EST is there and other country okay so you end up in creating multiple copies to avoid that maybe you just build one report only but give an indication in the report name itself saying the time zone is utc so that users are aware okay what are the time is displayed in utc and uh, they convert on their own okay now this is real time okay whatever i just covered is real time and even some consultants who are working in fusion application maybe for short duration for one year two years they didn't observe this point also okay now a date and then what kind of transaction i'm trying to perform miscellaneous receipt so here i wanted to explain our functional consultant work also what is the functional consultant work here during the report uh, development you have to collect the you have to collect the sample report sample report format from the client the client is asking for some report okay what columns you want in that report give me some sample data give me some sample data so they will send you this in the excel and you give it to your technical guy and that guy is going to develop the report after he develop the report you validate it in the report whatever the data that is displaying is right or not you validate it you verify this data to the front end screen whether this item is really assigned to this category or not in the report it is showing electronics but in the application maybe it is assigned to uh, another category in the application you have to validate the data that that is displayed in the report to the application data and if everything is working fine you can send it to the client and ask the client to validate the data okay we are doing a middleman job here between the client to the technical consultant gather the requirement from the client and explain it to the technical guy once the technical guy developed that report you validate the report data with the front end uh, data everything is working fine you can hand over it to the user and ask them to verify it. okay that is our work during the technical components during the technical components it could be report or it could be something else we always uh, uh, be in the communication between the client and technical team. so i'm selecting miscellaneous receipt and use current item cost i'm selecting yes why i'm selecting yes i'll uh, cover shortly and at the line level at the line level for which uh, item you want to receive the stock i'm selecting the item i'm selecting the first item okay after the selection it's not displaying here okay it's because of the browser uh, issue okay so this application you know a lot of browsers are there a lot of browser versions are there so it's not possible to compatible this application with every browser and every browser version it's not feasible that's why sometimes you see some browser related issues okay that's why after the selection item is not displaying okay i think you observed uh, the item selection right you observed the item selection yes, right yes yes, yes sure. okay and then i'm selecting the sub inventory nothing but uh, in which sub inventory you wanted to or store the stock i'm selecting rm raw material and uh, the moment i select the item you see here the uom got defaulted from the uom got defaulted each 53 is defaulted from the from the item property from the item definition from the item definition and i'm entering the quantity 500 quantity that i'm entering or 5000 5000 quantity i'm entering and uh, this particular transaction it has to post to which company which department you select the account here you select the account i'm just selecting uh, one account randomly but in real time you know uh, who is performing this transaction that guy is uh, aware of uh, which account has to be selected I'm just selecting one account randomly, but this is nothing but you know 
this transaction is belongs to which company okay and uh, which uh, department and it has to go to go to which account so this account has to be selected for our practice purpose we can pick up uh, anything randomly account okay and uh, i am clicking on submitting the transaction so in this transaction what i have done i have just added only one item if you want you can add multiple lines also i just add only one line if you want you can add multiple lines also you want to perform the transaction for multiple items you can add it here i'm taking a screenshot of this transaction and click on the submit button transaction process without any issue click on okay now i wanted to see my on hand i go to i go to manage item quantities to see the on hand i'm using this task manage item quantities and uh, for which item you wanted to see the stock i wanted to see the stock for so and so item One zero one, right? First item. One zero one. First item. Okay. The first item. Okay. Click on the search. Okay. Now you see five thousand. Now question to you: This five thousand I received from whom? What is the source for this quantity? Is there any source? No. No, there is no. There is no source. So this is nothing but we perform miscellaneous receipt. We perform miscellaneous receipt if you wanted to instantly increase the on hand. If you want to instantly increase the on hand, we perform the miscellaneous receipt. And uh, this transaction is called as a logical transaction. Why it is called as a logical transaction? Because it happens only in the application, not physically. Not physically, okay. Suppose if there is a transaction that happens physically and in the application, that's called as a physical transaction. Nothing but an example. You received a stock from the supplier, so you'll receive physically the stock, the same whatever you received physically, you enter in the system. That's called as a physical transaction. Understood? Yes. Understood. What is a physical yes. transaction? You receive the stock from the supplier physically, the same you entered in the system. But here, did we done any physical transaction? No. No. That's no. why this is called as a logical, logical transaction. So, is there any source here? No source here. We don't know source. So, we are just instantly increasing the stock in the respect to sub inventory. Okay. Why? Why we are doing like that? I'll give you the business specification. Now, the next topic I want to cover is issue. Now we received. The stock now i want to cover issue same place create miscellaneous transaction create miscellaneous transaction and here now i'm selecting miscellaneous received sorry issue and this use current item cost is nothing but current item cost is nothing but for the item whatever whatever we are entering the item whatever that I'm entering the item for this item, the cost you want to enter, you want to enter here. Suppose if you select no here, you have to enter the cost here. You see, here. you have to enter the cost. If you select S here, no, I don't enter the cost for this transaction. Use the cost that is defined already. Did we define cost for this item as mm. of now? No. 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 No, no, no. We didn't define. We'll define the cost of this item later in the costing module. Now, if you define the cost later in the costing module, I want the application to pick up that cost. Use item cost. If you select no here, you have to enter the item cost here in the transaction level. Let me show you. Or else you want to enter the cost here itself. You can enter. I'll show you. Miscellaneous issue. 
I want to enter the cost here. So select no here. And here you can enter the cost I'll show you. Yes means it will pick up the cost later that you'll define. And no means you have to enter the cost here. I'll show you. I would like to remove uh, some 150 quantity. Okay. So here, uh, item cost field is not displaying. You add it to the view. Click on view and columns. Here, all these columns you can add to the view. I'm selecting the unit cost. You can enter the cost here. Item price is nothing but cost only. You can enter this item cost. This item cost, let us take uh, its uh, INR, it's uh, 12 rupees. 12 rupees. If it is yes, what will happen later? Whatever the cost that you define for this item, it will take that cost. Later, we'll define in the costing module. If you, do, if you don't want that cost to be taken, you wanted to enter the cost here, you can enter the cost here. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I just entered the account. Now, how much I would like to issue out? How much I want to issue out? 150 quantity. 150. Okay. Now I'm hitting the submit button. Now go to the on hand screen. That is nothing but main is item quantity. Main is item quantity. Now, how much it should display? How much it display? 4850. So, what about that 150? We sent it to whom? What is the destination? No destination. destination. No destination. So, again, this is a logical. logical. Suppose the business justification is suppose uh, suppose uh, uh, physically the stock is damaged. Your stock is damaged, mm -hmm. but in the system the stock will damage. In the system, no, no, no we no. have to manually do it. Yes. You have to issue out, right? In that case, the stock you have to issue out from the system, right? Yeah. Yes. Understood. One of the business justification for yeah. this transaction. Yes. Yeah. You have to issue it. So if you wanted to balance your inventory levels in the system, if you want to balance your inventory levels in the system, in the application, we perform receipt or issue according to the business situation. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, the next transaction is, this is enough. I don't want to spend more time on this topic because this is a simple topic only. That's why I'm not asking, uh, I'm not taking the q and also. Not required, I mean, this is fine. The time that we have spent on this topic. Next topic is sub-inventory transfer. This is, see the name itself, sub-inventory transfer. Transferring the stock from one sub-inventory to the other sub-inventory. Okay, let's do that. From one warehouse to other warehouse. So inventory model basically stock management, okay? So I'm using this task now. Create sub-inventory transfer. The type you select it to sub-inventory transfer only. Sub-inventory transfer only, the justification. The source is nothing but justification, 53 batch demo and from the line level select the item the moment i select the item the application is going to display the availability also it will display the availability also here and i'm selecting the sub inventory i'm selecting rm here raw material and destination sub inventory. This is source, this is destination. 
So from which sub inventory to which sub inventory you wanted to transfer. From RM to stores, I would like to transfer. RM is containing how much? 4850. Out of 4850, I would like to transfer 850 to stores. This is called as a sub inventory transfer. So you're transferring the stock from one warehouse to the other warehouse. Okay. So this could be any uh, any business reason for performing like this. Suppose initially after you complete your manufacturing, suppose you have initially put it into your finished goods sub inventory, later you put it into freezer. Freezer, freezer is also a warehouse, right? Freezer is also, you can configure as a, a sub inventory of airports. You can transfer it to the freezer. Okay. Any business uh, reason for the stock transfer between the warehouses? Okay. Now click on the submit button. Transaction process without any issues. Suppose if I go and verify the stock. If I go and verify the stock for our item. On the search. And now this item stock is under this ornation, totally under this ornation 4850. In the RM, how much quantity? 4000. And in the stores, how much quantity? 80. Understood? Sub inventory yes. transfer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next concept is movement request. Movement request also same as sub event transfer only. Same as sub event transfer. But here, did we, in case of sub event transfer, is there any approvals that we followed? No. But in case of movement request, we have approvals. We have approvals in case of movement request. Purpose is same. But here, no approvals. Here, approvals are there. Okay. We'll see movement request. Movement request has got three steps now. First, you create a movement request and submit for approval. After getting the approval, you have to send, you have to create a document. You have to create a document. What is this document? This document is actually called as a pick slip document. Before I talk about pick slip document, I wanted to show you the pickers. Rare host pickers. I'll show you some images. What they are doing, they're actually picking the stock, right? Okay, they're picking the stock. So when they are picking the stock, see here, they're referring a document. So this document is called as a pick slip document. It's called as a pick slip document. So you have to, uh, you have to send this document to the picker. They simply follow this document. Suppose if you say verbally, they pick up that item, they won't work. Because verbally, there could be a communication gaps. There could be a misunderstanding. To avoid that, they need a document. So if you send this document, if they follow this document in this document, which item from which warehouse, how much quantity has to be picked, they follow this document, that's it. And they will transfer the stock from one sub inventory to the other sub inventory. Understood? First, to create a movement request. Later, after the approvals, you issue a pick slip document to the picker. Then picker is going to transfer the stock from one warehouse to the or one sub inventory to the other sub inventory. Understood? The steps clear? Yes. Now, what is the difference again between this one and this one? Here also, this is sub inventory transfer only. This is also sub inventory transfer only. But here, approvals is there. And also, documentation we are following. Documentation and approvals. So, this is the difference, two differences. Okay. Now, first step is create a movement request from the business user login, from the task list, click on main is movement request, main is movement request. If I go here, I can click on the plus button to create a new transaction. Before I create a new transaction, Approvals is there, right? Approvals. That approvals, I would like to set up to, now I'm in the implementation user team. 
approvals is actually a configuration. Configuration is done by implementation team. So I'm, that's why I'm on the implementation user. I'm navigating to the inventory. Inventory falls under which offering? This offering. Manufacturing and supply chain material management. Under this offering, you'll see inventory. I'm navigating to the inventory. I'm navigating to the inventory from the inventory here. If you see any task related to movement request approvals, let me know. Movement speaking rules. Approvals, movement request approvals. No, right? You didn't see anything? No. Oh, where is the task done? Let me use the global search. Movement request approvals at right there. Here, uh, but it's not showing up there. Um, manufacturing and supply chain material management and from the inventory. Um, Okay, I'm using the global search. Okay. In is moment request approvals. So here, here you can configure that moment request should be approved by, suppose if I'm creating the moment request, it should be approved by my manager or warehouse manager or who has to approve it, that can be configured from here, okay? But here in the screen, what is meant by stage? What is meant by participant, routing, uh, this one, this one, all these I'll explain in the procurement. I will explain in the procurement because in the procurement, I'm gonna spend eight to 10 hours on the approvals, on the approvals, I'll cover there, okay? But here, it's going to be, since you are beginners to the application, if I cover now, it's going to be too much heavy for you. That's why I'm not covering now. I'll cover in the later classes. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to do is, I would like to set to auto approval. Nothing but I want my movement request should be auto approved. It should not send to anybody approval. Okay. I'm going to configure that kind of rule here. Yeah, right now it is set to automatic approval only. Right now it is set to automatic approval only. Okay. Let me check uh, in another instance that you are using that is EHQZ, right? There also I'm gonna set auto approval. Okay, so that you no need to set up any approvals. It will be automatically approved once you create a MR. MR is nothing but movement request. What I'm doing, I'm I'm just verifying whether it is set to auto approval or not. Okay, I'm gonna set it to auto approval. I'm not confirming it to route for anybody approval. Main is movement request approvals. And here also I'm checking in the EHQZ. Yeah, it is set to auto approval only, don't worry. Okay. In your application, I mean to say in EHQZ also it is set to auto approval only. Okay, team. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if I create a movement request, it will go to anybody approval. If I create a movement request, will it go for anybody approval? No. 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 It's auto approved, right? In the both the applications, the one which I'm using EKMK and EHQZ, in both the places, it's going to be auto approved. 
now I'm going to create a moment replacement. A second. Click on create. And uh, this movement request number, whatever is generated, it is application generated. So you cannot specify a numbering pattern for this movement request. It's not possible to specify. It's generated by the application. Okay. And description, purpose, and uh, the current status is incomplete. And what type of movement request is requisition movement request? And what do you want to do? I would like to perform the transfer, stock transfer between which sub inventory to the which sub inventory. Now selecting RM and again, I'm selecting stores. Number. What I'm doing, I'm trying to perform transfer. What transfer the stock transfer between RM to the stores? Okay. So this movement request is equal into the mode in EBS. We have motor concept right in EBS. It's equivalent to that. And uh, which item you want to transfer? I want to transfer so and so item. Okay, I selected the item. And how much quantity? How much quantity you would like to transfer? How much quantity? I would like to transfer 200 quantity. Okay. So the source sub inventory and destination sub inventory is defaulted from the header. From the header, it is defaulted to the line. Okay. How much quantity you would like to transfer? 200 quantity. I can submit for approval now. I can submit for approval. Now, if I submit for approval, you know, if you configure approvals to somebody else, you know, this request, this movement request has to be approved by that person. But what we have done, we have set it to auto approval so that it won't look for anybody approval. It will be automatically approved. So this movement request approval is a new concept. It's a new feature, which is released recently by Oracle, recently. So every quarter, Oracle is releasing the new features, right? Every quarter, new features and uh, existing bugs is automatically fixed by Oracle. Now, you can actually search and read the new features. We have to read. After completion of the classes also, you have to continuously upgrade your knowledge by going through the or by reading through the new features. How you can find out the new features link, this is how you can find out. You can get into web, what's new in Oracle Fusion, inventory, management, Okay, you see a link from Oracle. And if you open that link, it's going to display all the new features by version. You see, 23A, first quarter, 23B, second quarter, 23C, third quarter. Now we are moving towards the third quarter. In the third quarter, what are the new features? that's going to introduce in inventory. So this is the list. Whatever you see, this is the list. It's still loading. The link is still loading. Let it load. Okay, you see here, 23C. What is the next release new features is? From the inventory, you can expand. From the inventory, you can expand. And this is what? One feature, two feature, three, four. Five, totally five features has been, not five, four features only. This is bugs. What are the bugs that has been fixed? 
this is bugs it's not a new feature but remaining are the new features only okay so today you are taking classes after one year after two years you have to upgrade your skill set on the new features right then since you are taking the classes i'm talking about the new features also during the during the class itself but later on you have to continuously upgrade your skill set you should go through these new features okay as i mentioned movement request of tools is a new feature how i come to know it's a new feature because every quarter i'm going to read the new features if i don't read new features then my knowledge is stopped if my knowledge is stopped see i cannot able to give the application best functionalities to the client what is the job our job is you have to give the application capabilities and best functionalities to the client so that client is going to use the application very well so movement request approvals you can directly type in the google also movement request approvals in oracle fusion i'm typing like this then here you got lot of links our link also this is for the inventory questions we got our link as well here i'm looking for oracle link uh, maybe i'll uh, use what's new in the search it seems to be it's a 22d feature because in the link you see 22d is given let's see this is 22d and if i expand inventory management here see use approvals for movement request that means this is which feature which year feature feature last year last quarter last quarter okay so oracle is giving the explanation and including the screenshots also what is the purpose of this feature business advantage how to enable this feature and how to use this feature in the application okay so what i'm trying to say is and also there is a video oracle is trying to upgrade the application very frequently every quarter it is trying to upgrade uh, its uh, capability so this is really good because our erp application like our mobile it is updating every time means it's actually advantage to the clients that means we are also getting a lot of projects here there is a video also available you can refer to this video also movement requests to enhance your business. Let's start the demonstration. We will log in to create a movement request from the inventory management work area. You are able to hear the audio, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, I'm playing the video. Go to the panel drawer to select the task manage movement requests under show tasks as inventory. The manage movement requests page opens. Click on the plus icon to create the movement request. Enter the attributes on the movement request header. Select the transaction type. Enter the source sub inventory. Enter the destination sub inventory. Click the plus icon to enter the lines information. Enter the item. Search for the item and select it. Enter the requested quantity. Click the plus icon to enter another line. 
and to the item. And to the requested quantity. Click the submit button to submit the movement request for approval. Make note of the movement request number. Enter the movement request number and click the search button. The movement request line status is pending approval. This means the movement request is submitted for approval. Now we will log out and log in as a different user who needs to approve the movement request. Log in as a user who will approve the movement request. On the inventory management work area, click on the bell icon on the top right corner. User can see the notification for approval of the movement request. Click on the notification hyperlink to view the notification details. The notification opens and you can view the movement request details submitted for approval. Click the approve button to approve the movement request. You can enter comment before approving. Click the submit button. The movement request is approved by the first user. Now we will log out and log in as a different user who needs to finally approve the movement request. Click the sign out hyperlink. Log in as a user who is next in chain to approve the movement request. On the inventory management work area, we will query the movement request and confirm if it is approved. Go to the panel drawer to select the task manage movement requests under show tasks as inventory. Enter the organization. Manage movement requests page opens. Enter the movement request number and search. The movement request line status is still pending approval. Click on the bell icon on the top right corner. User can see the notification for approval of the movement request. Click the approve button on the notifications pop up. You may approve the notification without having to look at the notification details. Let's query the movement request again to see if it is approved after approval by the final approver in the approval chain. We can see the movement request is now approved. Now we will log in as the user who created the movement request to verify if he has received the FYI notification. Once logged in, click on the bell icon on the top right corner. You can see that the user who created the movement request will get a FYI notification of approval. You can click the dismiss button. This concludes the demonstration. Okay. Right now I'm setting it to auto approval. The reason for setting it to auto approval is, uh, you know, I have to explain um, all these uh, uh, things. What is the stage body spend and then how to create the rules inside the these stages so it will take time and also we have only one user nothing but one business user we don't have multiple business users for routing for the approvals also that's the reason currently i set it to auto approval okay so this is the new feature this is actually interesting feature uh, it's not available i think in ebs i don't know the latest version in ebs it's available or not what is the latest version in ebs what is the EBS latest version? 2.11. 11. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure whether it's available in 11 or not. Okay. I think it's not available. I'm not 100% sure. It's a good functional mm. inclusion. Okay. It's 8.14. Um, we are uh, in the middle of discussing the movement request topic. I just completed with, with one step. 
and uh, we have also submitted for the approval and let's see whether our movement request got approved or not it's approved you can see if you search with the movement request number and uh, the status is approved the status is approved now the next steps i'll show you tomorrow Next step is nothing but we'll generate a pick slip report and we'll send this pick slip report to the picker. And uh, the picker is going to transfer the stock physically from one warehouse to another warehouse as per the document. Once he confirms the physical transfer, then we can transfer in the application also, the stock transfer. Those steps we'll see tomorrow. Any questions, please? Today I start with the inventory module. Initially, I explained about the differences between the two roles, operator and manager. And after that, we started working on the inventory transactions. We are done with the receipt and issue and sub inventory transfer. And we are in the middle of the movement request topic. That's it from my side for today. Any questions, please? Sure, okay. I have a small doubt, sir. Uh, what is the difference between product management and inventory? In the product management, in a simple language, you are just creating the items. That's it. You are not maintaining your inventory. But in inventory, are we creating the items? No. We are not creating the items. We are just maintaining the stock. Maintaining the stock is nothing but you, you, may, you can uh, receive the stock from your suppliers and you can ship to your customers the stock. For your stock, you can generate lot numbers and serial numbers. Everything related to your stock, the inventory. Okay, you are not there. Uh, you connected late to the today's class. Hey, I, at least uh, seven uh, six forty five itself I connected, sir. But I explained the purpose of inventory and product management and the starting itself. What is the difference? Also, I explained. I don't know whether you followed up. Any more questions? Krishna, there is that even login is not open. Like it says, I think. You know, it could be, you know, if you are trying with the wrong password, sometimes it might be logged. Can you please contact Patma? Please message her in the box. I am just using the password, what, I meant, what is mentioned in the. Please message Patma. Okay. And I have one more question, Krishna. Let's say, for example, my client server is currently under the UTC time zone. If mm. client would like to change the complete time zone of the server from UTC no, to PSC. I think it's not possible. Not possible. Okay. Mm, not possible. Okay. Because it's not, uh, it's also confusing for the Oracle, right? Mm. If all the client servers are in one time zone, then there is no confusion to Oracle. Suppose your time zone in, in one country and that client time zone in another country, it's again a confusion. Okay. And again, an issue and every oh, bug fixing and then every upgrade, upgrade, upgrade features are rolled out to every client environment, right? Because of these different time zones, there could be some challenges they may face also. That's yes. why it's not possible. Okay, Krishna. Thanks. Okay, team. And we are uh, entering into the important critical topics. If you are not practicing, you will face a lot of difficulty. You are not able to understand the subject also. Practice is important. Practice is important. Okay. And uh, after inventory, I'll start the procurement. Once I start the procurement, I'm getting into uh, a critical, uh, very, very important topics. And I'll cover a lot of business scenarios also. A lot of subject also I'm going to cover from the procurement module. Okay. You have next one week time to finish all your practice. If you don't finish, you'll be in a trouble. Please message Patma. Maybe somebody tried with the wrong password multiple times. That's why the dev 31 uh, is locked. It may be locked that a user. Please message her. She will uh, just WhatsApp her. She will check the password of that instance. Hi, sir. This is Sai. Oh, sorry. Uh, sir, I got some errors. Uh, I have sent you a mail. Please, can you please check and help me with Not able to update locator control. It's because of the. Um, these are all your uh, your uh, setup issues only. Okay, all this is I have explained in the class. 
coming to this issue or even I faced during the class. Okay, the position that we created, it should be approved. It should approve it. Okay, so we don't know our position uh, approval has went to which user. That's why what I've done is I removed the position. This okay. error I got, this error even I got during the employee creation. What I've done, the position that we have created, it went for somebody approval. We don't know. It went to whose approval. That's why what I've done, the position I removed and I'm able to save this form. Okay. okay sir. sir, and the locator combination is also, I mean, uh, the I'll retained earnings account. I'll come to that next issues. This is clear, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And this is even I faced. I don't know how much you're observing the videos. This is even I faced. And coming to the retained earnings account, the account that you are selecting here, it should be a liability type. It should be a liability type. Uh, the combination cannot be used. It does not exist. Did you try it with any other combination? Uh, yes, sir. I tried. You are getting the same error every time? Uh, yes, correct, sir. Same error I am getting. You are using which application? The weight. Mm. EAJ. We provided this instance. Yeah, I got it from uh, learning portals. Mm -hmm. If I don't have login for that instance, I believe. I think Padma is maintaining that instance. Well, let me check. Sir, on 28, you have given the, this new instance on 28. Mm -hmm. Not me, she is maintaining up in this instance. My user details are av available in, in my mail ID, sir. In, my, in this mail, that's gonna really help me to quickly open and check the issue. Coming to this issue, coming to this Primary? issue. Coming to this issue, it's uh, because of your inventory org setup. When you're defining your inventory or nation in the first tab, okay, uh, there you select the time zone, right? Below to that, locator control is there. That you have to set it to determine that uh, sub inventory level. I'll show you that. I'm explaining the first issue, not the return earnings account. After that, finally, I'll explain you the return earnings account issue. What's your inventory or nation as per the screenshot? Uh, I'm not able to see your inventory or here, what you have used. Sorry, this is the first time you're practicing. You didn't practice enterprise structure before. No, I practice sir. the second time I'm practicing. Okay. What's your org name? Uh, sir, check with 53 DSK. Second time when you're practicing, I think you're not referring anything since today. You're using which one? First Bangalore one. Or Bangalore? First one. Ah, yes. Okay. So here when you go to org parameters, here you see here at the org level what you said, I don't okay, want to okay. use locator. Okay, sir. You know, if you try to change it now, I don't know whether it will allow or not because this is a setting that has to be done in initial itself. Let me try. Okay, tell load. Okay, from okay, no sir. control to I selected. Yeah, I would like to create locators at sub inventory level. The last option locator control determined at sub inventory level. You have to select this. Okay, it's your uh, mistake, your configuration mistake. This one and uh. Coming to the other error, uh, the return earnings account, you have created your own uh, chart of account? Yes, sir. I think in this screenshot, I think you should have displayed your chart of account also. I can see your calendar, but not your chart of account. Okay. Um, navigating to financials. Mm. 
general ledger and then i open the ledger options and here you are trying to what's your chart at the time you click on your own this is is there any deployment issues in this application successfully deployed your chart at the time yes sir successfully deployed selecting company Even there, you can maybe you yourself even And when you said what library here from see for the account segment value set, not only these three. Additionally, you should be able to see the account type, whether that is a liability account or expense account. Okay, but I think uh, your startup account setup is wrong. I you think I have missed something. Yeah. You have to cross it. In the face something, you have to cross it all the configuration, what you did around that. I think what you have done is uh, in your uh, when defining your structure for the account segment, uh, the Label we select the label, right? Yeah. That label ah, correct, correct. Yeah, selected, uh, you know, selected properly. Crossing the setups, okay. You should be able to figure it out where you are done the problem. That's how you can improve your troubleshooting skills. Mm. I'm opening the account. So here for the account, you should now select cost center. You have to select. Natural echo. This is the issue. Okay. It's all your set of issues, man. Okay, sir. You have to verify the configuration when you when you get into any issues and deploying it. After the deploying, you perform that setup like a manage chart of account value set values. Sir, how how we we'll get to know where we have that wrong like it's your setup only okay you have to verify the step one you did correctly or not step two you did correctly or not you have to verify okay you have to troubleshoot from the starting and i got one deployment error You can assign unique segment to at most one segment. So you see here in the error message, this is your structure, right? Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, we are updating the label from the cost center to national account. I think it's not allowing, seems like. <clears throat> it's not allowing that change. It's giving the error. Uh, you see here in the error, is there anything here in the first line, second line? No. You have to troubleshoot like this, okay? Uh, I think uh, it is reporting some issue with your structure. You see here your structure name. It says you can assign unique segment label. GL account to at most, most one uh, I think, uh, Okay, sir. I will try to I mean, create one more time, the entire thing. 
no, if you create again uh, the chart of account, you are not able to assign to the existing ledger. You have to create a ledger also new one. Um, let me check. So check against department what he has taken. Yeah, I'm trying to see that. Against other segments, what you have taken for company, you should take primary balancing segment. Okay, it's fine. And uh, for the department, what you have taken? Yes, sir. For the yes. department you are taking, natural. This is the issue. Yeah. Yeah. You see here, this is a clear explanation thing. Okay, this is what I am trying to explain in the previous class also. So if you get a log file like this, you should be able to read it. If you are lazy to read, then. <laughs> You see here, I am able to read this error. That's the reason somebody who is that? Who is that? Somebody is easy, easy to catch that issue. Who is that? Just Pratik, like Pratik. Shishir. Pratik. Shishir. You see, yes. he's able to catch the issue just by reading through this error. You have to yes. read it. So what is that unique segment? That means the label, the same label you assign to some other segment. That's the issue. Actually, yes. it, it, it changed. Against account, he, he has taken department yeah, and against... for, yeah. for department, you have to take cost center. And for account, you have to take natural account. You, you did reversely. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So now you have asked me questions of how we will come to know if we face any error like this also. Okay. We don't read errors. We are lazy. Most of us are lazy. If you see like this uh, a big uh, paragraph, we don't read. You have to break it. If it is a big paragraph, break it into multiple uh, small sentences and read it. Is there anything here? Is there anything explanatory here? No. Is there anything explanatory here? No. Okay, I'm deploying it again. You understood, right? For uh, department, you assign national account. And yes, for sir. national account, you assigned a cost center. Yeah, I did it in reverse. Hmm, reverse. Now, after this, after the deployment, you do that. What is that means? Uh, the treat in the right? No, no. After this, we select that uh, yellow posting. Yes, right. You just verify again. Okay, sir. I'll do. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to do it for the account segment. Mm -hmm. After that, you can try with the return and exit. Okay, sir. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. I think <laughs> I think second time you're you're doing a lot of mistakes. It's because you're more confident. No, sir. I am I mean I am trying to do without uh, referring anything. Okay, I, I understood. But when you say without referring means uh, you know when you get errors, you have to refer. Uh, this is, I mean, this is my first time, sir. I mean, I even don't know how okay. to see the errors of the, I mean, now I'm yeah, learning. See, not only this, okay. what about the setup? The setup you did or not? You have to verify it, right? Yes, sir. The setup you did wrongly, right? You have to verify that. Mm. Okay, man. Thank you. See you tomorrow, Timba. Okay. Thank you, sir.